Uh, good day, student. Uh, my name is T.A. Popi. I'm a lecturer in civil engineering at Tivet Colleges. So today's lesson is going to be about construction planning level two, which we pick up on topic number two, which is going to be based on measuring and setting out instrument. So the outcomes which is going to be covered is as follows. We are going to look at the purpose for measuring. We are also going to look at the measuring and setting out instruments. We'll also check on the readings of the following instruments, the tape measure, the veneer caliper, the micrometer, and the staff reading. Then lastly, we are going to, to wrap it off with the two methods. The first one is going to be your stop method. You'll also know exactly how to use that. Then the second one is going to be your three, four, five method. Then the, basically, when we are doing measuring in engineering, we have to identify or determine the size or the amount of a degree which needs to be measured on the structure. So there are two possibilities that needs to be measured. You can either measure the vertical component or the horizontal component. So while we are still on that, just uh, take note that each and every time when you have to measure, all your measurements has to include two items. The first one is going to be the numerical value, and then you are also going to include the unit when you are measuring. So the measurement without having any unit is not going to be meaningful. So if you look at this example that I post up for you, it says the old man asked for two kilometers of water to drink while he was getting rest from the six liter distance that he has traveled. You would have noticed that two kilometers cannot be able to be used to measure the, 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 the liquid and six liter can never be used to measure the distance. So, but if you swap those two around, at least you can be able to, to see. It's going to make a little bit of sense. So it was supposed to say the old man asked for a two liter of water to drink while he was getting rest from the six kilometer distance that he has traveled. So the purpose of measuring, as we have indicated already, we have got two concepts that we're going to look at. The first one is going to be the ongoing measurement, and then the second one is going to be the investigative measurement. When you talk about the ongoing measurement, I'll just give you an example of a trench. If you dig a trench, a trench can never be measured at once. You have to dig a little by little as you go on measuring because there is no way that you can be able to measure from the top level of the ground going down into where the trench is going to end. So you have to go on, uh, it's an ongoing process which will mean you will measure as you dig, measure as you dig up until you get the measurement that is required. Then by means of the investigative measurement is the amount of measuring or determining any problem that can come up of the, 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 the situation or the site where you are going to build the structure, which can include the wind, the rain, which is not go going to be always on the site, but somewhere, somehow, you, it might be determined to see how much wind or how much rain the site can be able to uh, acquire. Then the groups of measuring instrument, we have got only four groups or where the measuring tools is grouped accordingly. Number one, all those measurements which is going to be used to measure the straight line must be identified. You must also be able to know exactly which tools is going to be used to measure the angles and which tools is going to measure the setting out. Then also the leveling of the site. Then let's start off with the simplest tool that everybody knows. Uh, if you have never ever been able to get hold to use a tape measure, just know that at this stage you are not uh, in the right place for the civil engineers. Number one, a tape measure is identified into two values. We have got a steel tape and we have got a plastic tape. And when we talk about the steel tape, we don't talk about the case that covers the tape. We only talk about the blade which is inside the case. So if the blade inside is a steel, we call that tape measure a steel, a steel tape. But if it's not, a, it's not having a steel inside, then we cannot be able to call that a steel tape. 
Then if you look at that example there, the case of that tape is made out of a plastic, but the blade inside is a steel blade. So that means the name of that tape measure is going to be called a steel tape. So in terms of reading of the tape measure, each and every smallest units of measurement that you have is recorded as one millimeter. So that means if you have to read from zero up to there where there is indication of one, it means that is not one of millimeters. Your one of millimeters is going to be this one. Then it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, up until you get to 10. Then the 10 is also considered as one centimeter. But at this stage, we don't read any readings in engineering using centimeter. You only use millimeters or convert it into meters. Avoid using the centimeter. Always stick to the millimeters or the meters. Then there are simple factors that can affect the readings. Uh, if you are using the tape measure, the first one is going to be the catenary. The catenary is when the tape measure goes down, if you are measuring between two points. And also measuring at a slope, you must always avoid measuring at a slope because there is no way that you can build the structure on a slopey area. Each and every time when you have to measure, you must cut it into a flat horizontal plane, then you can be able to use it. Then consistency in terms of tension, you mustn't pull too much tape measure. And then lastly, you must never ever use the tape measure on a very high temperature. Hence, it's going to tend to stretch as you are doing your measurement. Number two, we are going to look now at the reading of the micrometer and the reading of the vinyl caliper. If you notice, you have got two instruments. The first one, as we have indicated, is the micrometer, and then the second one is the vinyl caliper. Those instruments, they are very much tiny instruments, which is normally used. They have got two concepts of each. So if we look at the vinyl caliper, a vinyl caliper is used to measure the internal diameter and the external diameter. Then you must be able to know how to label all those because somewhere, somehow the examiner can ask you to draw and label that vinyl caliper. Then the second instrument that we're going to look at how to read it is the micrometer. So the micrometer is used to measure the thickness of an object. It can either be the thickness of the glass, the thickness of the timber. It will depend on the material that you're going to work on. Then now let's look at how to read the vinyl caliper. When you read the vinyl caliper, you have got two scales. The first scale is a main scale, and the second one is a vinyl scale. So you start by reading the values on your main scale, but when you read it, you must always make sure that it doesn't exceed the zero of your vinyl scale. So this is how you are going to read it. You are going to say it one, two, three, four, five. When you get to five, you must stop because now it's going to exceed the zero on the vinyl caliper. That means you are going to indicate that as five. So now you are going to have five there, comma, and then you are going to indicate any line which is going to be from the vinyl scale and then it's corresponding with the line on the main scale. So if you check on all those, they are not corresponding, they are not corresponding, but if you check at this one, that is the closest that you can find which is corresponding with the main scale. So it's going to be now five comma five, because now you have got four and then you've got six, that means this is going to be five. So your value is going to be five comma five. So let's just look at the second example. The second example, it's going to be from zero, one, two, three, four, five, then it's going to be your 10, then it's going to be your 15. Before it gets to 20, then you have got your 19. That means you're going to record 19, comma, and then you go and look again at the number which is going to correspond with that. So if you check the number which is going to be lastly close to 10, so that means it's going to be 19, comma, 10 to indicate that it was very close to be 20. Then the last two, which will make it very much easier for you to be able to see, if you have to read on this one, now it's going to be one, two, three. Now you understand it's going to be at 10, 11, 12, 13. Then you have got your zero there. You are going to record 13, comma. 
and then you look at the one which is going to have any correspondent that is going to be number seven. So it's going to be 13,7. If you look at that, it's going to be five, nine, then nine comma, the one which is corresponding is five. That is going to be 9.5. So now let's look at the micrometer. A micrometer is very much uh, complicated compared to the vinyl caliper. And when you buy them, they come in two ranges. The first range, it will be from 25 to 50. The first one is going to be from 0 to 25. The other one is going to be from 50 to 75, from 75 to 100. So it will depend which instrument are you going to use. So if you look at this one, the examiner might ask you, what range does this micrometer fall in? So you always look at the first letter there. That means this instrument is going to start from 0 up to 25. Some of them, they might differ. If I can just look at this, you will notice that this one now is going to start at 25. It means it's going to be within the range of 25 and 50. So now let's just look at how do we read this instrument. If you read on this, the whole of this information on this side is going to be your main scale, and then you have got your micrometer scale on this side. When you read, you still read normally exactly the same as the one that you did on your vinyl scale. You start by reading the number on your main scale, then you go and read the correspondence on your micrometer scale. So it's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, then you see it comma, and then you look at any number which is corresponding with the major line of your main scale. So any number which is corresponding with that is going to be, if you look at that, it's going to be at 40. So that means the reading is going to be, as we've said, 10, 11, 12, comma, 40. So the reading on this micrometer is going to be 12, comma, 40. If you look at the second um, example here, the second example is going to be from 25 now. So it's 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, and then you go and look at the comma, which is going to be 20, then it's going to be 29.20. Then let's look now at your E-type staff reading. If you, you notice, most of the instrument that they normally use in surveying is the dumpy level, the theodolite, whatever instrument that they can be able to use, but they cannot be able to use it without having that item as a staff reading. So we normally used to call it an E-type staff reading because it's the one that is normally going to be used to determine how high the level of the surface is going to be. So let's just quickly look at that in details. So now if you look at this, this staff reading is divided into rooms. So from here up to there is the area which is going to fall under 06. So take note, there is no comma in between, but each and every time when you read this reading, you always put a comma. So this number is not called 06, it's a 0, 6. And if you look at this, you have got two E's. The first one you can be able to see it is the black E, and then the second one is not that much visible, but it's there, where is the white E. So you have got these two E. The first E consists of 50, and then the second E consists of another 50. That means from here up to there, you have got 100, which is also divided into a smaller columns, which has got 20, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So if you look at that, you can be able to see it's also divided accordingly. So when you take the readings, you take the number first, and then you check where the line of the crosshair is going to be. So let's look at the one that has got the crosshair. Now if you look at the dumpy level or the theodolite, you will see those crosshair passing through your staff reading. So let's say you have to read the top hair. If you have to read the top hair, the top hair is going to have that 2, 4, which you have already indicated that it has got a comma in between. So it's going to be 2.4, then you record 2.4. Then from 2.4, you read the line that is passing through there. So that line 
is coming from zero, that means it's going to be 2.405. Say for example, you wanted to read that readings there, it's going to be 2.3, 50, 60, 70, then 75. That is how you can be able to read or record those measurements. At this stage, if you were following me, you will be able to read the following readings, either the upper hair, the middle hair, or the lower hair. If it was supposed to be on the middle hair, on the middle hair, it was going to be 2.4, 50, 60, 65. If it's on the lower hair, it was supposed to be 2.3, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. So when you get used to this, you won't have to go and do 50, 60. You'll automatically know this, it was at 90, that was at 65, that was at 40, without counting from zero. Just keep on practicing how to do that. Then your last example will be this one. If you have to read the middle year, your middle year is going to be 1.422. The lower hair is going to be 1.345. Then the upper hair is going to be 1.500 because that is the beginning of that column uh, 1.5. Then now we are going to start looking at the sitting out and the setting out instrument. So when we refer to a setting out, a setting out is a process of taking out the information from the plan. When we draw a plan, we are drawing a plan that it can be taken into a ground to become a reality. So when we say the setting out, it means taking the information from the plan and then you go and draw it on the ground just to reflect the real structure that needs to be constructed. And you will understand you have to do the scaling down because you have to, to, to indicate whether if the scale which was used was uh, also corresponding with the scale which is going to be used on the ground. Then you can be able now to indicate the foundations. You can also be able to indicate the walls on that type of a sitting out. And remember, each and every time when you do the sitting out, you must always stick to your NBR, which is the National Building Regulation, which was also covered in topic one. So just to give a little bit example, there you can be able to see a little bit of a setting out where the student gather to verify whether the plan was correct before they can be able to come and do the setting out on that plan. So at the end of your setting out, you will have to go and throw using the type of the soil. You can use the lime, you can use the cement, whatever different material on the ground that are going to work on. You can be able to go and use that, then you have to have the plan on the ground. Then now, uh, in the exam, they might ask you to go and list the instrument which is going to be used to do the previous setting out as you saw on the previous slide. So the first instrument is going to be the spread level, the second one is going to be the plumb up. Then the third one is going to be your builder square. And then you've got your ranging rods. Then you've got your, your optical square. So I just want to look at each and every one of them specifically in a short period of time. Then you've got your spirit level. The spirit level normally is going to be used to determine the following things. Even though most of the builders, they don't use it for that specific reason. So you can be able to determine the angle but the angle which is going to be determined is only going to be an angle of 45. And then you can be able to use it to determine the plumbness of the area or to check if the area is vertical, or you can also use it to check if the area is level. Then if you place it like that, you can be able to see, then you can be able to determine whether if the area is level, or you can place it like that to see if the area was vertically straight, or you can also place it at an angle of 45 degrees just to determine the angle of 45 degrees. Then you have got your builder square, and in terms of the builder square, the function of it is just to determine the squareness of the building, either the inside or the outside. And then you must also be able to know how to check for the accuracy before you buy the, uh, the builder square. So you take the builder square, you put it on the flat surface, you throw a horizontal line and a vertical line, and then you flip it on the other side, and then you repeat the same process. If the line correspond with each other, it means that instrument was accurate. But if it gives you a little bit of a V-shape, just know 
that instrument is not square. Then the optical square, which is used to determine an angle of 90 degrees. If you have got two lines which is perpendicular to each other, you use the optical square to be able to determine an angle of 90 degrees. There you can be able to see, as you hold the, the optical square, you approach the two ranging rods, which is placed uh, far apart from each other. If you have to determine that angle of 90 degrees, then as you approach, these poles will start appearing into your optical square. Up until all of them they are in line or straight line, then you will know the point that are going to stand in is going to be perpendicular between those three points. Then the maintenance of the instrument or the maintenance of the setting out instrument mostly is going to be general in all of those uh, uh, equipment that you are going to use. So you must be able to know how to clean them after and before you have used it and you must always keep them separately because otherwise they will end up damaging each other. Don't drop them on the ground because it's going to, to be damaged and also make sure that you use them for their specific duties and always after you have used them, keep them safe on a store and dry place. Then an era of parallax, an era of parallax is when you are viewing two objects which is parallel to each other, but you are viewing it from a different angle. So if you have got a reading or a staff reading and a dumpy level, but you are viewing it from a different angle, that is going to give you an era of parallax. Then you have got some abbreviations that you have to go and look at. Number one is the SANS, which is the South African National Standard. You have got your NBR, which we have already discussed about that. You have got your NHPRC, your DPC, and the DPM. So those are the normal uh, abbreviations that you are going to find when you get into the exam. Then the last two methods that we said we'll look at, uh, the first one is going to be your, your stop method. So your stop method, the stop method, we are not talking about the stop sign that you normally know, is totally different concept that you have to, to know. So you will use this method to cut a multiple length of a material. It will depend which material you're going to have, either a timber, either a steel. So if you have got a machine and you go and connect that piece of timber there, that piece of timber now became a stop because now when you put a material, it's going to come and stop at that specific point. Then you can be able to cut it. And then you put another one, it's going to stop there, then you can be able to cut it. Hence, you are cutting that. That means all this measurement that you are going to have is going to have exactly the same measurement without measuring it several times. But if you don't have the stop method, it will mean you have to go and measure each and every time as you, you cut. Then you can be able to see again another example where you are putting these long materials, but to be able to cut a small piece which is going to have an equal sign. Even if you want to cut a steel, there you can still see a, a steel rod which is being cut there with the stop on this side. So that is the process that we refer to as a stop method. Then the last method that we're going to look at is the, the 345 method. A 345 method is normally the Pythagoras method in mathematics. If you want to find out that this angle when you are doing the setting out, that angle is 90 degrees, you must always make sure that you measure three meter on one side and you measure four meter on, on the other side and you adjust these two points up until you find five meter. That would automatically mean this angle is uh, 90 degrees. Then you repeat this process in each and every corner of your building. But to verify that all this corner now, they are giving you 90 degrees and they are in line with each other, you go and use a diagonal method line. So by means of measuring the diagonals, if you look at the, the, this top uh, structure, you can see that this angle is not 90 degrees. Why? Because if I measure this diagonal from here to there, and that diagonal from here to there. It is not going to be equal. But if I have to measure this diagonal from this side to this side, and from this point 
to that point, these diagonals they are going to be exactly the same, then that will mean my structure is going to be exactly 90 degrees or is going to be square in all the corners. And lastly, just make sure that you, you don't have to build the structure which is skew or the structure which is not going to be in line with the regulation. So each and every time when you want to start building, consider the regulation which has been uh, given to you, adhere to it, stick to that, because otherwise the people that you are going to build for, they are not going to be happy at all. Uh, okay, student, now as you have seen, we managed to, to cover all those outcomes that we said we are going to look at. At this stage, or at this point in time, now you must be able to know why is it important for us to do the measuring and then you must also know exactly which tools or which instrument is going to be, uh, to be used for measuring and for setting out. And you must be able to know how to separate them and also do the readings. So you must, at this stage in point, you know exactly how to use a tape measure and how to read a tape measure from one millimeter up until whatever measurement that is required. You can be able now to use a veneer caliper and you can be able to read the veneer caliper and then you know exactly what is the function of a veneer caliper as you have indicated is to measure the internal and the external diameter. You must also know at this stage you know how to, to, to use the micrometer and you also know where exactly do we need to use it when we have to measure the thicknesses of the object and we have already indicated the class as example. At this stage you can now be able to be part of the surveying team because you can be able to read uh, the staff reading and also estimate the horizontal distances. Then you now know exactly what the difference between the stop that you were knowing before this lesson and the current stop method that we definitely have to use in the workshop. And lastly, you know how to verify all the squareness of the building by means of using the 345 method. And remember, the lesson that you do, if it was given to you, it has been monitored by people who designed that curriculum to say it, you can do it at your level. And if somebody has already done it before, that automatically means you can also do it. And for the next uh, topics, which, which is going to come next, we'll look at the foundation, which is topic number three. See you then.